come now to the final episode of this video series. If you watched the other videos in this series so far, you will have seen the figures in my personal collection, and hopefully by now you'll have a good idea what the pros and cons are of this line. To give credit to DC Collectibles, they produced an incredibly expansive range of figures, taking in pretty much every character you could think of, and then a few more. Incredibly, almost 9 times out of 10, the mould for these figures were unique pieces, meaning that each figure felt individual and true to its source material. The sculpts were generally top notch, and the accessories are really, really fun. But there were also some of those fantastic world building elements, such as the Bat Signal, the Batmobile, or even the Batwing. So for those who invested deep on this line, we're rewarded with a very rich world in which to display their figures. But conversely, these figures had some significant drawbacks too. The quality control wasn't always fantastic, meaning that certain joints were liable to snap and break, and a lot of these figures suffered from a lack of or serious restriction of their articulation due to their sculpts. And probably worst of all, as the line went on, they became harder and harder to find. So certain diehard fans were left with an incomplete collection. But today, in this final video, I'm going to take a look at everything I've missed, everything I haven't covered so far, and there's a surprising amount of extra things that I didn't manage to get my hands on that I'd like to share with you today. First up, we have Zatanna. Now, Zatanna is actually one of the easier ones to pick up on the secondary market. So if you're missing her from your collection, now's a pretty good time to pick her up. I do have this figure somewhere, but sadly she seems to be lost somewhere in a crate in storage. But I can tell you from first-hand experience that this is a very nice figure. Once again, the sculpt is pretty much pitch perfect. There's a few issues when it comes to standing, much like the other female figures in this line. And of course, her articulation is a bit more limited and a little bit more fragile. But she does come with some cool accessories, she comes with her cane, she comes with a poster, and a couple of extra sets of hands. And while she isn't strictly a core character in the series, it is really nice to have her nonetheless. And it's really fun to be able to build out some of the roster of other DC characters from the wider universe in animated series form. Now, in my first Villains video, I looked at the various Harley Quinns. The one I didn't touch on, however, was the Expressions pack for Harley Quinn. Just like the Batman and the Joker before her, Holly comes with a whole series of extra heads, hence the expressions. But she also comes with a whole host of other cool accessories, including the two hyenas, her roller skates, rocket launcher, her jester stick, and then of course this giant fish costume. <laughs> uh, this is really, really very cool. And I think these expression packs are some of the best in this line. And I think if you weren't able to pick up these characters first time around, they're really good value for money. If, however, you're like myself and you pick them up when they first came released, when they were single carded, uh, then this would be more difficult to justify. In hindsight, I do regret not picking these up because these are really very, very nice. And sadly, now they're very, very difficult to get hold of on the secondary market and go for a small fortune. Now, much like the Man Bat, they did another deluxe oversized figure in this line, and this was Clayface. Once again, this is a brand new mold, and he comes with quite a cool collection of different appendages. So he's got the mace hand, he's got the claw, and he's got the axe. And I also really like the given alternate head as well, which is quite imaginative. Now, I can't really speak to the articulation, but it looks like he's got the ball jointed shoulders, a swivel neck joint there, hinge hips and swivel feet, and he's clearly got ball jointed elbows and an ab crunch. And it looks like this is supported by a chest joint there to allow him to swivel from side to side. Clearly, he's oversized as well, so you can imagine he will stand a good distance taller than Batman. But I think this would be a really impressive figure in the flesh. Sadly, I missed out on him, but yeah, again, one of those in hindsight, I wish I'd been able to track him down. Now, at some point during these successive waves, they actually branched out and did a couple of deluxe twin packs. And these tended to look a little bit beyond the scope of Batman the Animated Series. I thought I'd mention them here more as a point of interest rather than any kind of analysis because they don't really quite fit in with this line. But a couple of them were really cool and it looked like they were going to really expand this line out. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be. But one of these sets was, of course, the Batman Beyond set, which featured the old Bruce Wayne, his pet dog Ace, and of course, the Batman Beyond, the Terry McGuinness Batman. Sadly, another one that I missed, but I would have really loved to have got my hands on this, and I would have liked to have seen this line expand a bit more and have a few more characters from this timeline. Another cool one is the Superman and Lois Lane. Again, this is a pretty cool set and kind of indicated where they could have gone with the line, developing more characters, and they did do a couple of others from Superman series. But I think I'll look at that in another video, because I do actually have this set, and I'll look at it in more detail then. 
After this though, there seems to be a little bit of a break and the line is put on hiatus for a while, but it would come back with another couple of waves. And the first of these two waves was pretty exciting. It featured the Scarecrow, Two-Face, the Grey Ghost and the Hardak Bam. Now, Scarecrow was particularly long overdue in this line. And for a while there, it was looking like we weren't gonna get him. But thankfully we did, albeit in very small numbers and made him very, very difficult to track down. Consequently, the cost went up for this figure and on the secondary market now he's very expensive. But once again, I think the sculpt on this is pretty much perfect. I think it's really, really faithful. It looks really great, actually. He seems a little bit light on accessories, but he does have an extra pair of hands. He's got his scythe, of course, and really pleasingly, he's got that extra head. But for now, he'll have to remain on my wish list as I try to track him down. And just like Scarecrow, Two-Face was another key character that they made his way all the way to the very end to get. And sadly, he's proven equally as elusive as the Scarecrow figure. And I have to say, this guy looks absolutely fantastic. I love the look of this figure. I love the accessories it comes with. Obviously, he comes with a couple of different extra hands there. His Tommy gun and, of course, that stick of dynamite. He just looks fantastic. I think the sculpt and the design of this figure looks phenomenal and I just really gutted that I wasn't able to get hold of him. Uh, so again, yeah, another one on my wish list that I'm trying to track down, but I think, you know, he'll be worth the wait when I do get hold of him because he looks pretty solid. Now, Great Ghost was a bit of a surprise, but a very welcome one. This is a really cool character. He shows up in two episodes of the animated series and, of course, he is Batman's inspiration. And although he's invented for the animated series, he's a very, very cool character. So whilst he's one that I wouldn't have initially thought to put in this line, it's really cool that we got him. And again, it's just a testament to how strong this line is, being able to fill it out with every possible character you could think of. And he looks absolutely fantastic. I think, again, the sculpt looks really good. The articulation looks really solid. Of course, I'm just basing it on this image here, but it looks really neat. It looks really tidy. It looks very functional. And yet, it's very displayable. And it looks, yeah, really well done. And clearly, he comes with a ton of accessories as well. Mostly interchangeable hands, a couple of pistols, which are fantastic. And then they've maybe gone a little bit slight overkill when it comes to the racing cars, but uh, very cool to have. To my eternal regret, I do remember seeing this in store, picking him up and thinking, oh, it's okay, I'll come back another day and pick him up. And of course, it was blink and you miss it, he was gone. So lesson learned and a quick tip for anyone else who's ever in that situation. If you're in two minds, just get it. And this brings us to the final figure of this wave, which was the Hardak Batman. Again, not one I would have ever thought of to include in the collection. And to be honest, it's one I can probably live without, but it is a very nice figure. I love the alternate head that it comes with there. It's fantastic that he comes with that sword as well. That's one he could probably share with Ra's al Ghul. And what's not to like about a Terminator Batman? The very final wave will consist of Poison Ivy, Mr. Freeze, Killer Croc, and Bane. And in my previous video, I already looked at Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze, and Mr. Freeze in particular was a highlight for me in this wave. But it's worth noting that by this point in the game, things had changed slightly. Turnaround stands were no longer included, and accessories were a lot lighter when it came to specific character props, and what we got instead was a lot of extra hands with these figures. And Killer Croc is probably the worst offender for this, because all he comes with is two extra pairs of hands, no other accessories, nothing else to really distinguish him. And up to a point, I think that makes sense. After all, if you ask me right now what other props would I have given him, I can't really think of anything specifically. But nevertheless, it is slightly disappointing considering the wealth of accessories we've seen earlier in this line. But that said, the figure itself looks really cool. It is obviously slightly oversized, which is kind of cool. And he looks like he'd be a fairly sturdy, solid figure. I don't think there'd be any issues of this guy falling over. And then we have the Bane. And once again, he seems fairly light touch when it comes to accessories. He's got those extra hands and a dumbbell. But once again, he is slightly oversized, so maybe it balances out. And in terms of the looks and sculpts of both of these figures, I think they're pretty sharp, to be honest. And with the exception of Poison Ivy, who I felt was just slightly off and a little bit disappointing, I think this is a really solid final wave. And to be honest, I think we were lucky to get this wave at all, because for a long time it felt like we just weren't going to get these figures, as they had been released previously as part of a very difficult to get hold of Rogue's Gallery set. Now, this set is actually very, very cool. So, of course, it has its cardboard packaging there which is creating a sort of prison police headquarters diorama. But what's very nice about it is that the packaging actually has a working light in it, so it shines a light on each of the villains in the packaging, which is a nice touch. But what's more, there's actually an exclusive figure here, and that is, of course, Rennie Montoya. Sadly, Montoya would never get a single carded release, and as a result has remained pretty elusive to track down. But I have to say, judging by the production photos, it looks like a really solid figure. 
The mould looks stockier and therefore more evenly balanced, so I don't think there'll be any issues of her falling over or falling down, as you do that with a lot of the female characters. But also, just the joints look a lot stronger and tougher there, so I think she'd be very, very poseable and very durable. And surprisingly, she comes with a decent amount of accessories, including an extra head extra hands and a couple of different weapons. Weapons that we've seen before repackaged from Commissioner Gordon and Bullock. And it's difficult to tell from this photo whether the hands would be sculpted in such a way as to support the shotgun because it is quite a thick piece that. But the wide open hand makes me think, yeah, I think they could probably hold this quite nicely. So I think overall this looks like a pretty solid figure and yeah, sadly one that a lot of collectors are missing out on I suspect. There was one final vehicle released as part of this line, which of course was the Bat Cycle. I'm really pleased that DC Collectibles committed and got this out there, because we now have basically all the vehicles in Batman's arsenal except the Bat Boat. And he does use the Bat Cycle quite a few times in this series, so this is this is definitely a real contender. Obviously, it's significantly smaller than the Batmobile or the Batwing. And the design, in keeping with the style and the source material, is quite simple, of course. But it does still light up, and it looks really kind of cool when it does. And it comes with a portion of the street as a bit of a display for it to rest on. And of course, it also comes with a brand new Batman. You see here that basically everything about this figure has been reworked, more or less. Obviously, we've got that slightly strange ab joint there which I suppose is to let him allow him to crunch over the bike a lot more. Uh, it looks great on the bike, but off, it doesn't look fantastic to be honest likewise those ball jointed uh, hips there very unusual for this line um again allow him to sit on the bike perfectly but off it looks a little bit strange a bit silly and of course it does allow him to have that helmeted head so it's another and probably the final distinctive look for batman and then finally we have what must be one of the centerpieces of this entire collection which is of course the batcave Sadly, this was also very difficult to get hold of, it was also quite expensive, and yeah, sadly, it just seemed to disappear. Essentially, what you get with this set is obviously Batman's giant supercomputer, a bit of a workstation, the base, which is essentially the cave floor, a little bit of a staircase leading up to it, and you also get this giant cardboard diorama to put around it, which creates the, the, the illusion of the rest of the cave, which is really very good, to be fair. And the other final component, of course, is that we get Alfred. Sadly, he was never released in a single carded format, and this special set was the only way you could get your hands on him. As you'd expect, the set does of course light up, that supercomputer there flashes up with all different lights on all those little panels, and of course the central image there also changes as well, which is really very cool. I never got this, and it is it is a gaping hole in my collection. Like I said, I think it would be the centerpiece, really, where you can have lots of your figures hanging around, uh, and it just looks so fantastic. And yeah, it's a real, real gap. I would love to get a hold of one of these. And that's it. For the most part, that covers all of the Batman the Animated Series figures, the ones from the main uh, two or three series of the show before it became the new Animated Adventures. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is obviously a very expansive line, and like I said, I think they've covered pretty much every character you can imagine here, and they've done a really nice job. And if you've managed to track down all of these pieces, you have a lovely collection. But that's not quite the end of the story, because recently DC Collectibles did announce a follow-up wave. This time it was going to be based on figures that were never part of the animated series, but were sort of imaginings of what may have come if the series had continued and they borrowed heavily from different story arcs from famous Batman stories over the last 20 years or so. This reimagined line was to be called Batman The Adventure Continues and has so far announced these four characters. Of these, it seems like only a couple of them actually have been released but I've never been able to get my hands on them. I haven't seen them available to purchase, at least in the UK, but I have seen some production photos and I've seen that some people have had them in hand so I'm guessing at least some of these got released, if not all of them. And this initial wave seems to consist of just three figures. It's the Red Hood, it's the Azrael Batman and Deathstroke. And I have to say, based purely on the production photos, these look fantastic. I love how they've got now the shading effect going on as well, like the white paint job there, just to kind of make it look like light shining on it. This seems very apt, very appropriate, and uh, yeah, it looks really good. The moulds look really solid, and judging by some of these in-package photos, it looks like they've got some really decent accessories here as well. And this is a line that I would be more than happy to support, and I'd definitely like to see them do more of this kind of thing. 
The trick, though, is being able to get your hands on them. Uh, like I said, I've had great difficulties being able to track down when they're being released, being able to see who's stocking them, uh, and so far in the UK, I've had no luck. And I've yet to hear whether there's any plans for any future waves, but I would love to get my hands on these, and I think it's something that could be potentially very exciting. And so, there you have it. Overall, a very impressive and consistent line of figures. Even better, DC Collectibles actually fulfilled their promise and managed to get every single character out, which is just fantastic. So, kudos to DC Collectibles. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like, and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.